Hello! In this tutorial, we are going to take a look at how to simplify a model and create a normal map very simply. If you don't know what a normal map is, to put it simply, it's a technique that recovers the surface from a source model with a high polygon count and applies it to a substitute object called a cage with far fewer polygons. This process is called normal bake and simulate bumps and hollows that don't exist in the cage. On the screen, you see the original model of the statue, with 120,000 points on the left, 7,000 in the center, and only 2,000 points on the right. I activate and deactivate the display of normal maps. With normal maps, the left and right models are hard to distinguish. In this tutorial, we'll explore the key point of each step, from downloading the model through simplifying it, then creating the normal by resampling or not the source model's normal map. First step, retrieve an interesting model from the web. I choose this model under Creative Commons Public Domain License, thanks to the authors. I download it in GLB format in the best definition. This format is practical, as embedding texture files avoids broken links. I drag it into 3D browser to examine it in details and take a tour of what's needed for baking normals. This model, which has 140,000 points, is made up several disconnected parts. We have a single material with a normal map, so the model has already been simplified from a more precise model. As we want a model with far fewer points, we will further simplify it with Polygon Cruncher. The object has user's normals, which are displayed in yellow in the viewer. They are not necessary for generating normal maps, but they are a plus, when they have been carefully edited to create sharp edges. I am now going to prepare the object by merging the different parts into a single object. In this single object, we end up with confused points along the edges of each of the old parts. This causes problems during simplification as the faces are not connected, so the parts will become separated from each other. Last but not least, the model must have non-overlapping UVs with value between 0 and 1. This can be checked visually. No overlap and UVs contained in a unit square with no overflow. So now we have a single clean object ready to be simplified with Polygon Cruncher and ready to create its normal map. I open Polygon Cruncher and run the optimization, taking care to preserve the UVs. Here, user normal are of no particular interest. For a better optimization result, I avoid checking the keep normal option. I adjust the level of detail and activate the wireframe display for a visual optimization control. Now, from this first simplified version, I will create the normal maps using the corresponding command. In this dialog, the source corresponds to the initial object, the one with all its points while the cage is the simplified object. We'll now set the normals for the source and the cage. For the source, we generally use user normals. This ensures the same smoothing and sharp edges in the normal map. Other options include the default smoothings to 30 degrees or using the normal map displayed in the viewer. For the cage, you can use user normals or maximum smoothing. If there are sharp edges, they can be preserved during optimization with the keep normal option. In this case, the cage will inherit user normals from the source to retain these sharp edges, and the backing process will then preserve all this. Here the model is smooth, and the use of a maximum smoothing enables surface details to be accurately moved from the source model to the cage. We'll see a little later what the normal map resampling option is for. Let's look at the other settings. The size, which must be a power of 2, such as 1024 or 4096. The encoding of normals in the image depends on the rendering software you're using. There's a link below that helps to know which encoding to use for which software. The alpha layer is not required for a normal map, but it can be added. These options allow to regenerate the diffuse map and modulate it with vertex color. 
These options are particularly useful if you are using an external cage and the object has different materials. Finally, we should avoid using the JPEG format, which will scramble the values of your normals, which are very sensitive data. PNG or TGA are fine. OK, go! When it's finished, you'll have information on the image generated and any problem encountered. Normal users have been added to the cage. A warning reminds you to export them when saving. This is very important. A normal map must be used with the cage and the normal used to create it. If the context changes, or the cage, or its normal change, the visual result will be disappointing. Here in yellow, we see the user normals that have been added. You can compare the display of the model with or without its normal map and switch from one mode to the other. You can also view the normal map in the image viewer, display its alpha layer and check that all is OK. Once baked, the object is locked. You can no longer modify its optimization. If you want a different simplified model, you must first unlock the object, readjust the level of detail and repeat the baking process. We've already seen how to do this. Now it's done. Another interesting option is to view the normal map directly onto the object. This allows you to check that everything is OK, especially the transition between certain faces. Now we export using the GLB format, which is handy because it always embeds user normals and can also embed textures, making it easier to share the file. Once more, avoid JPEG format for normal maps. As we saw above, JPEG is on grid for these maps. Let's make sure our model is correct and that it can be used in an external viewer. I drop it into Sketchfab to check that we've got what we need and, above all, our normal map. Nice, everything seems to be there. Now, one last step to conclude this tutorial. We can improve the result by reusing the normal map from the source model. On the left, our source model with 120,000 points and on the right, 7,000 points versions which will be our cage. From the 3D browser viewer, the baking dialog offers a new option for using an external cage. This cage can be a model simplified using polygon cruncher or any other models that might fit the purpose such as ferro cylinder. As the cage comes directly from the source, it has the same materials, the same dimension, the same information. It is therefore advisable to check these options, which will prevent any internal tampering with the cage during the process. To compare our model after baking, I uncheck these options, which retains the source model and places the cage alongside it in the viewer. Let's check the other parameters and off we go. On the left, our source model and on the right, it's 7000 versions with the normal map just generated. Remember, at the start of this tutorial, we saw that a normal map was provided for our model. We'll take advantage of this by checking the option to resample the source normal map. This option is not available if the source has no normal map. The other settings remain unchanged. And there you have it. You can clearly see that you gain in quality by reusing the supplied normal map. Details are more contrasted on the right-hand version, so when this normal map exists, it can be a good idea to use it. That's it for now. Have a nice day and see you soon!